I'm back working on the PDP-8M. In the first video in this series uh, we had a quick look at the machine. I popped the boards out, we had a quick look at those. The machine seems to be in basically good condition. The boards didn't seem to have too many modifications. There is something going on with the power supply in here so I need to try and figure out what's going on with this but the next step is to completely strip down the chassis. Now if you're just repairing one of these you don't need to strip the thing right down. I'm just doing this because I want to restore this as well as repair it. So um, step one is we'll spin this around. I'll get the mains connector off and out of the way uh, and then we can start taking the metal work apart, get the back plane out and then remove the power supply. So I'll just get this spun around. Okay, what we can do now is take the screws out that hold the power connector in place. I'll remove the earth lead. And then we can disconnect the power connectors. And now they're off, we can take the power block completely out of the way. That gets the mains cable out of the way so we don't have the cable uh, constantly trying to trip us up. So we can put that to one side. Okay, next thing is we'll turn it back uh, around the other way and remove the uh, front surround. So there's just some screws uh, on the back here and we can take these out and then the front surround will come off completely. Just get the key out of the way. In fact some of these screws are loose already so looks like somebody may have already had this off. Okay, okay so what we can do is take this out have a look at this. that actually looks to be in excellent condition. Um, I was contacted when I first introduced this project by somebody that reproduces these uh, overlays. It makes an exceptionally good job of them and they look uh, almost 100% genuine and authentic. So uh, if you do need one of these and you're repairing one, then um, let me know and I'll pass your details on to him. Um, but he does make uh, exceptionally nice uh, copies of these. Uh, but this one's in good condition and this says uh, 3rd of March 1976. Okay, just get these uh, screws out of the way as well. These are supposed to be captive but what normally happens is they get hit and it pops this out. I'll put um, some new bushes in here when I come to reassemble it. Take the one out to the other side as well. In fact, that bush seems to be still attached. Okay, so you can see here the uh, LEDs that shine through the front panel, and one of the reasons it's nice to get these apart is you get a lot of dirt down behind this panel, and if you give it a good clean, it makes all the LEDs much brighter. Also the dirt's got a habit of getting into the mechanisms for these switches and if you're not careful, if these haven't been used for a long time and you start uh, toggling these switches, you'll feel it go a bit tight and if you then try and uh, force it, you can easily damage the switch. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is get the uh, front display panel out of the way. So there's just some screws on the inside that secure that. So we can take this off along with its uh, securing cross piece. There's a metal cross piece that it's attached to that the lights uh, shine through so we can get that out of the way as well. And uh, once this is uh, removed, then you can just pop this uh, board out of the back plane. So we'll get it out of the way. Okay, so we have this now ready to lift out. Um, it is still attached 
to the key switch down here so there's a lead um, that attaches to the key switch so remember to pop that off first and then the entire assembly will just lift out and again dirty but uh, seems to be in reasonably good condition same date on it so I don't think it's been replaced it's 1976 okay so that's looking good so as I'm going I'm just checking for any visible damage on any of these parts it looks fairly promising so far there's a lot of dirt down in the back plane but uh, not too bad so the next thing we can do is get the back plane out and um, these are again quite easy to remove I, I'm just checking I can see some metal parts down here that I'm assuming have made their way down here at some part in the history of this machine as it's been worked on I'll get those out once I've got the back plane out another good reason for taking these out if you get metal debris behind obviously that can do a lot of damage a lot of evidence of um, these being prized in and out there's a lot of chips and bits missing off the it should be a ridge along here um, that is used to locate the cards and um, it's, it's a stop them being put in kind of offset a uh, lot of damage on these so uh, this back plane material is very brittle and quite often you'll find that these um, lips have been snapped off now as long as it's just the lips and the actual back plane itself is not cracked then it will be fine Okay, I've taken the four screws out that hold the back plane to the chassis. This is now free to uh, be lifted out. I've disconnected the remaining wires that were attached from the power supply. Two of these were disconnected already. This can stay connected. It's just uh, an extension for the uh, power connector. Uh, I'm assuming somebody's had some accessories or something connected to this at some point. Um, we can probably remove that at some point but I'll leave it there for now and uh, we just need to pop this connector out so there's a connector at the front here and then we should be able to lift out the back plane and this is what I meant about if you get metal caught underneath uh, it's very easy to short these out so um, it is worth taking these out and checking again it's nice and clean in here there's no sign of corrosion or any damage from critters so that's looking quite good I've got a screw here that's uh, appeared so that's one of the uh, case screws and we can lift this out put it to one side it needs a very good clean no, contacts don't look too bad just looking at the contacts for each of the uh, connectors and they're just dirty I don't think there's any corrosion in there okay we've got the back plane out of the way and the next thing to do is to pop out the power supply now again there's uh, ground straps on here so we will need to disconnect those before we can get the um, supply completely out so I'll just get the um, the earth connector disconnected before I go any further okay I've got the uh, ground connectors removed we'll just get rid of this cable as well and what we can do now is just um, undo these four uh, fasteners and uh, get to the power supply okay that gives us access to the power supply I'll lower the camera so you can have a, a better look at this before we go any further okay so this is the power supply and um, 
This is another reason to remove these before you uh, power them up. There's a fan in here, there's three fans in the machine, there are two large ones on the side to keep the cards cool and there's another smaller one here to cool the power supply. This quite often seizes up and uh, stops blowing air and then the power supply will very quickly overheat. Um, but either way it tends to accumulate a lot of dirt and debris in here and it uh, can um, collect moisture as well so if it's uh, damp and you try powering it up then of course it's most likely going to destroy itself. So um, what we'll do now is get the power supply removed completely. It's, there's not much holding it in, it's just a couple of screws and then we should be able to get the power supply removed completely from the chassis. Okay, so I've got the two um, nuts removed that hold the power supply in place. To make it easier to slide out, I'm actually going to take the two uh, cooling fans off the side of the machine. I'll just tilt it onto its uh, back so you can see what I'm doing. So there's a nut that goes on here, that's the one of the nuts that hold the uh, ground wires in place. And then there's another one at the other end, so down here, so that's been removed as well. And now this whole power supply will move forward. You can get it out like this, but it is much easier to get out without these two side fans in place because it does tend to foul on them as you try to withdraw it. Uh, if you don't do that, you've got to tilt the whole thing and uh, rock it out. But it will come out, but it's a very tight fit. Um, but as I want to strip the chassis down completely anyway, I'm going to remove the two fans. Okay, I've got the two fans removed. I've also removed the key switch. And um, I should now be able to pull the power supply out of the chassis. One thing I'd say at this point is these machines, if they haven't been worked on before, uh, are always much dirtier than they appear in the uh, video. So if I just take a piece of uh, kitchen towel, then there's a kind of a thick black, it's not just dust, it's kind of a thick black um, grime. It's um, a bit like a cross between grease and dust. And uh, someone left a comment on one of my uh, recent videos saying, wasn't I concerned that this could be uh, dangerous or there could be something harmful in here? And the short answer is, no, I'm not concerned about that. Um, but a more complete answer would be, uh, it's entirely possible there is something in old machines like this that could be harmful. But the same is true of new machines, there could be anything in it. So um, I tend to work on a common sense basis. If you're at all concerned about what might be in these machines, then you can wear gloves. If you are uh, too uh, concerned and uh, think it might be too dangerous, then just don't work on them. I've been working on these now for around 50 years and um, I haven't had any harmful effects. That's not to say that I couldn't off the very next one I work on, but as I say, I tend to work on a common sense basis. If there's something that I believe may be harmful, I'll wear gloves until I've cleaned it. Um, but something like this that's been in a, a working environment, an office environment or something like that, there's no reason to believe there's anything harmful in here. If it's been used in a CNC machining environment, you might need to be a bit more cautious. It could have some um, contaminants in there that you wouldn't want to come into contact with. Um, but like I said, it's common sense. This one's uh, fairly clean. This is typical of the sort of uh, build that you get uh, when it's been used in a, a smoky environment. So most likely this is a combination of nicotine and dust. Um, even so, you might not want to be uh, in close contact with that. So as I say, if you're concerned, put on some gloves. Uh, having said that, I'm just going to continue uh, as I've uh, been working previously. So the next thing is we should be able to bring this power supply forward. This is why it's easy without the fans in the way because they do overhang this to a certain extent. Okay, so the power supply can now be lifted out. And uh, this is what we'll work on in the next video. We'll strip this down, give it a really good clean. You can see it's absolutely filthy. And um, I wouldn't want to turn uh, this on in this state. Uh, almost certainly we'd get uh, some um, arcing or conduction where we don't want it. And uh, also I want to make sure the fan is spinning. And uh, we'll check the capacitors and uh, make sure we don't have any shorted uh, uh, components in here and then we can do a full load test 
using our electronic logs. So let's get this out of the way. Okay, so now it's out of the way, we can just uh, dig out any debris that's left. Okay, so it's like uh, someone was taking notes of uh, what was in here. So if you're interested, these are the cars I did find in here, by the way. So we've got the M847, that's an option. So there are two option cards in here. One's to uh, allow the unit to auto restart, and the other one is a bootloader, which we'll look at in uh, more detail. The bootloader in particular is quite an interesting card because of the way it works, but uh, as I say, we'll look at these in a future video. Uh, we've got the G111 memory uh, system, M837, uh, 84 out, uh, 848, which is uh, another option card. And then we've got the core memory cards. We've got an 8320, an 8310, an 8300, and an 8330. And we'll look at each of those in turn in future videos. So that's it. The next thing I can do with this chassis is give it a good wash. It doesn't need refinishing, just needs cleaning. Uh, needs some... Um, repair to some of the uh, metal work but nothing serious and uh, once we've got this sorted out we can look at the power supply so we'll look at the supply in the next video and uh, once that's working we can start reassembling the unit